Hi, I am Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today, we are talking about the new book in Rochelle Mead's Bloodline series, Golden Lily. Oh, there's a lot of reflection. You could see that picture. Yeah, I was super excited about the release of this. The Bloodline series is by Rochelle Mead. It follows the character Sydney Sage, who comes out of the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. Vampire Academy, don't knock Vampire Academy if you haven't read it because it is friggin' awesome. It's another thing like the word vampire spoils the series name, just like the Vampire Diaries. Whatevs, it's awesome. It's one of my favorite series. The thing is, when you tell people to read it, the first two books aren't amazing. They're just like, oh, that was fun. And then it gets amazing. There's six books in the series. So if you haven't read those, I mean, I would go check those babies out. If you like Vampire Academy, check Bloodlines out. And if you like Bloodlines, you gotta read Golden Lily Offs. If you wanna know what Bloodlines is about, go watch the Bloodlines book talk. Yeah, awesome. Now we're gonna spoil things. So I would just leave. Leave and read the book and come back so we could talk about it. If you haven't read it, bye. Mm, 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 mm. So this book opens with Sydney talking to the alchemist. We see Keith again. What the heck? is this re-education center place. They, they were threatening to send Sydney there in Bloodlines. And I'm thinking it's just kind of like a school of propaganda about vampires being bad. Keith's acting like he's being waterboarded. And that makes me highly uncomfortable. I don't know who these people think they are. I've lost all respect for the alchemist community. This Marcus Finch guy who left the alchemist. He broke away from this prejudice, hate propaganda against all other races. Because all races have the capability of evil. There's horrible humans everywhere. People get murdered all the time. This is where those books are going. Sydney's eventually gonna break. She knows what they're doing is wrong. She just doesn't know how to break from them yet. She hasn't brought herself to the realization that she's gonna have to leave them as a community. Their intentions are okay, but they just don't understand. They don't have the understanding of the world because they're too set in these traditional beliefs that aren't right. Just because someone a long time ago said it was true doesn't mean that they were right. Sydney is eventually gonna break. It might take however many books. Another thing, I don't know how many books are in the series still. I Googled that shit and Google yielded me no results. Damn you, Google search! Which means that either Rochelle has never announced it, or Rochelle doesn't know herself, which I highly, highly doubt. I'm very curious. I know the next book doesn't come out till February. The Indigo Spell. <laughs> These books just fly by for me. I start reading them, and then they're done. It's because I love the characters so much. You already know them, and I'm just really excited to hang out with them again. I feel like I'm part of this fake family, and I love it. I love all the incest references. Why can't you go to the dance with me? Aren't you guys cousins? There's a huge love pentagon within this family. It's a big incestual blob. I feel like we're all friends. We're all chilling. Then the book just ends and you just take them away from me. And I can't hang out with them again for a whole nother year. How rude. Well, thanks for keeping my best interests at heart. I always wanted a brother to watch out for me. Don't you have like three brothers? Uh, I meant figuratively. That's, yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, of course. I Brothers. I've been picturing everybody wrong, I guess. Always pictured Eddie with dark hair. He apparently has sandy blonde hair. <sighs> Angeline, I pictured having dark hair. Angeline comes from the wild. She's kind of like the Amish coming into the real world for a little bit. How is Angeline? Is she improving? Improving how exactly? In combat? In following the dress code? Or in keeping her hands to herself? Or turning off caps lock. Like Angeline only talks in caps lock, so it's like she's always yelling. But that assembly with the motivational speakers and the Angeline taking them out. And then at the end, at the Warriors of Light conference, Sydney's like, whoa, she took him down like he was a motivational speaker. Oh, I love Rochelle Mead's writing and her dialogue is so good. Again, we see this Leah woman, and she's just very insistent on Jill modeling. There's a reason that they're adamantly saying no. No, this modeling thing's gonna come to bite them in the ass, and of course it does. It's it's gonna play a bigger role. It's just gonna keep snowballing. Decent amount of Dimitri in this book, kicking ass. We even get to see Rose's face or hear her voice, which is upsetting. We learned about these warriors of light. They're all humans. They don't have any special abilities. They think that they can take on Strigoi. Just makes me laugh. Strigoi would just flick his finger and you would be dead. Watch us fight each other. You guys are human. They're not. You're dumb if you think you have any chance. 
everyone just has to take a breath. If you're wrong, let's just let's just accept it. Just a very stubborn group. Adrian is easing her into this vampire world. Little by little, chipping away at that wall she has in front of her that makes her believe that they're different from us, that she can't hang out with them, we can't be friends. Because it's been drilled in her brain for so long that these people are evil. But she is chummy with them, and so she knows it. She just doesn't want to accept it. It goes against your core beliefs. I hate when she's like, goes against my beliefs. They're not your beliefs, Sydney. They're someone else's. They told you to believe it. She gets more and more comfortable with Adrian. Thank God. Adrian is nothing but nice to you. She always talks about how it's bad with Brayden. Not bad, but it's just eh. And then with Adrian, it's like, oh. There's no comparison. Adrian and Brayden. Brayden is just really annoying. He's not funny. He irritates me. Oh, it's fun to talk about things, but he just has this superiority to him. He thinks he's better than you type of feel when I read his dialogue. I don't enjoy him much. Sydney getting ready for these dates is just hilarious. She's trying to pick out an outfit. Her friends are like, this is the kind of shirt that says you're never getting in here. I think it's more like a shirt that says, I'm going to have to end this day early so I can go prepare for my PowerPoint presentation. I love how Sydney always has to ditch a Brayden for family stuff. It's just the best. Bye, I have family stuff. She just goes, haha, -ha, Brayden, bye. Good luck with that. Brayden, he feels socially inept. He's not funny and he's not charming. I don't know what the sell is. At Halloween, he was so annoying. Stop, stop insulting her dress. You could say like, haha, -ha, it's inaccurate. But he just said, it's inaccurate. If you're gonna insult her, you gotta laugh about it because you're just kidding because you don't really want to insult her. <laughs> Ooh, also on one of their dates, Brayden mentions a local artist whose stuff is on display. Is that Adrian's stuff, do you think? And this whole Sydney not eating thing is really, she's ridiculous. Do you want to have dessert? When Brayden said, oh, you want dessert? Isn't that too much sugar? Ah, oh, how dare you? Just, she wants dessert, you get her dessert. There's some stuff this date at the textile mill and she's somewhere with Adrian texting him, running an hour late with family stuff. Sorry, we'll be there as soon as I can. My phone chimed back about 30 seconds later. That only leaves an hour for the textile museum. And Adrian's like, that's not nearly enough time. Adrian's trying to spend more time with Sydney, you know, and he buys that car. We all know that car was a purchase for Sydney to drool over. Could you be any more obvious? I don't know how to drive it. And I was like, that is the biggest load of bullshit I have ever heard. And Sydney just doesn't, doesn't pick up on it. It was just so cute watching Adrian care so much. So they go to these defense classes. You, to my shock, Wolf pointed at me and fixed me with a steely one-eyed stare. What did I tell you to do when you arrived? Give you cash, sir. And after that, you told us to come wait out here, sir. He nodded in satisfaction. Apparently my answering of the obvious had gone well. How funny are these Adrian through Jill Sydney love fest moments? Jill said nothing, and when I glanced over, I saw that she was watching me again with that weird and raptured look. She sighed happily. You are always so good at everything, and you don't even realize it. I think Jill has a crush on me. Sydney, your haircut just is so perfect. That shade of gray just really makes you look perfect. You just look really good today. Well, I said awkwardly, really unsure how to handle this. I decided escape was my best option. Thanks, I'll see you later. Hey, oh, I love that bonding moments between Sydney and Adrian, how she's so understanding about his dad. His dad is an ass. All the best characters have daddy issues. And it's super exciting that Sydney's starting to embrace her magic abilities. When she was talking to Adrian and he used his compulsion to get in to that really nice house, he's like, maybe you can get used to vampire magic after all. She's like, no, I'm not used to that. And he's just, Sydney, why would you say that? She said that was mean. Not everything is just right or wrong. There's a gray area and she just, they, they make believe that it's either black or white. We have this great moment where Sydney just lets herself be with Adrian. It's like, oh yay! Wait a minute, everything was great until I started thinking and then I couldn't stop thinking. This is wrong, we can't be together. And Adrian's just like, uh-huh. Yeah, you don't think that. Sydney, get over it. I have to leave. I have to go. Sydney, goddammit. Stupid alchemist culture. Sydney is in the transition stage. At least she's transitioning. Like, back to these warriors of light again. They remind me of the scavengers from the Delirium series. Let's just kill everyone. That's the solution. No. No, it's not. They're about to kill Sonia. This whole Sonia situation, they're gonna kill her without any proof that she's a Strigoi. She's obviously not Strigoi. Or else she'd kill you all. 
you'd all be dead. There would be no sedating her. There would be no capturing her. Yeah, like it shows we have the power to capture her. You could never capture us, you're going to idiots. And then Dimitri and Eddie burst into the arena. What now? And they're no match for the hampers, the stupid little humans. All this fighting is going down in the arena. Get the alchemist girl, hold her hostage. They'll negotiate for her. Sandy's just chilling. The alchemist girl, right, that would be me. I loved reading this. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your favorite parts. What you think's gonna happen in the next book, The Indigo Spell. Yeah, thanks for joining me. I hope you had fun. And I will see you next time. Bye.